feel a little bit the least bit guilty. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 wildest British TV scandals. I'll grow out of it at some point. I hope. I'm okay. I'm doing okay. Gillian. There's a pile of crap. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the most contentious and ridiculous controversies to be born from British television. Let us know in the comments which one you think is the most ridiculous. Number 10. Orange Man Meant to convey the bite and buzz you'll feel when you crack open a can of Orange Tango, this advert doesn't seem too problematic by modern standards. But it wasn't necessarily the ad itself that courted controversy, but the stories of children and teenagers getting tangoed, i.e. kids were slapping each other around the face. Oh yes, we could be in for a quintessential tango sensation here! Why? Unsubstantiated stories even came out about kids actually ending up in A&E. And it wasn't the last time Tango's You Know When You've Been Tangoed campaign ended up making the headlines. Another ad named Pipes was made in 2004. And he's gone, look at that! The ASA was worried it would encourage people to put themselves in dangerous situations and banned it. Number 9, EastEnders goes to Ireland. EastEnders. The year was 1997, and the brains at EastEnders decided it was time to do something different. It was from Ireland, from this woman called Maggie. She says she's my sister, and she wants me to go to Ireland to meet her. The writers introduced a storyline where Pauline Fowler and company find out they have a group of long-lost relatives overseas in Ireland. The episodes were filmed on location in Dublin and, with it being still a year before the Good Friday Agreement was signed, it certainly didn't help the fraught political situation between Ireland and the UK. Offensive Irish stereotypes abounded in the three episodes, which saw the Fowlers and the Beals mostly encountering rowdy, drunk Irish people. Oh, well, don't go if you don't want to. No, we weren't saying that. What were you saying then? When the Irish Embassy got involved, the BBC was forced to issue an apology. Number 8. Bill Grundy interviews the Pistols. Today. They are as drunk as I am. They are clean by comparison. They are a group called the Sex Pistols. One of the most infamous clips to ever grace the stage of British television, in 1976, the Sex Pistols were drafted in to replace Queen on the Today Show when Queen cancelled at short notice. It was clear from the beginning that the interviewer, Bill Grundy, was either drunk, didn't like the Pistols, or both. Oh, what what, what are we saying, wonderful sir? wonderful people. Are they? Oh yes, they really turn us on. He went out of his way to provoke them into swearing before the watershed, something that still isn't allowed decades later and was largely successful. But despite the pistol's profanity, it was still Grundy who came out of the interview with no career waiting for him, while the pistols became one of the biggest bands of all time. We'll wait after it, shall we? <laughs> you dirty son. Oh, you dirty old man. <laughs> Number seven, Benefit Street. James Turner Street was one of the best streets. Unemployed, unemployed. No, one of the worst. Rather than an isolated incident, the entire concept and execution of Channel 4's Benefit Street was a magnet for controversy from the beginning. It was widely described as poverty porn, touring deprived working class areas and exploiting people reliant on Britain's welfare system. I'll grow out of it at some point. I hope. Channel 4 executives were even interviewed on the BBC about whether Benefit Street is helpful or harmful to Benefit's claimants, repeatedly saying that the show aimed to represent the poorest parts of society to raise awareness of inequality. But in the end, the show was axed after just two series, and in the years since, many news stories have appeared on the deaths of multiple people who appeared on the show. It's like, I'm out here every yeah. day. Yeah, but the stuff you see, you don't say nothing to no one. Number six, Hardwick House. Remember, my door is always open. <laughs> 
metaphorically speaking, of course. Since school is a universal experience in the UK, shows about school, whether comedies, dramas or documentaries, can be incredibly successful. But that wasn't true for the short-lived sitcom Hardwick House, which aired briefly in early 1987. Seven episodes were made, but the public hated the show so much that only the first two ever reached the small screen. Hmm. Imagine knocking off that. Well, you can talk with your missus. It featured wildly inappropriate stories about the teaching staff leering at the girls and highly violent comedy skits. These things wouldn't be amiss in an edgy show in a late night slot, but Hardwick House was on TV much too early to justify its obscenity. Gillian. Was a pile of crap. Number 5. Zara Holland loses her title. Love Island. It takes a lot more than looks to win the Miss Great Britain beauty pageant. The winner also has to be able to represent Britain in a global beauty pageant as well. You know when you're in the moment, like and it just happens. It was sort of like one of them. That's the reason Zara Holland, who won the competition in 2015, had her title stripped after a particularly steamy stint on Love Island the following year. After getting up to no good with fellow Islander Alex Bowen, almost as soon as he entered the villa, Holland was deemed unfit to represent Britain on the world stage by the Miss GB organizers. <laughs> well, they've taken my title off me. <laughs> But many people came to Holland's defense and, in turn, criticized the entire Miss GB pageant for being old-fashioned. I'm okay. I'm doing okay. You're um, right. I'm all right now. Number 4. The Red Triangle From time to time, in the late evening, Channel 4 transmits films made for the cinema, which some viewers may find a bit strong for television. For just a few months in the 1980s, Channel 4, generally the most maverick broadcaster in the UK, experimented with a new form of warning for adult programming. This warning was a red triangle logo, and it was displayed on screen with selected films, which were aired very late at night and were often X-rated. Special discretion required will come up again before the film continues. This got Channel 4 a lot of attention, including from one of TV's most infamous critics, Mary Whitehouse. In the end, the Red Triangle films, as they came to be known, garnered huge viewing figures, and then a lot of disappointment when they turned out to be foreign art house films rather than the raunchy content people had been hoping for. Whew. Number 3. Hell's Angel What makes Teresa of Calcutta so divine? Mother Teresa, a devout nun with a long history of humanitarianism, was one of the most celebrated figures of the 20th century. She was widely praised for her charity work and, after her death, was made a saint by the Catholic Church. But she wasn't without her critics, and one of the most prominent was the famous British intellectual and atheist Christopher Hitchens. How does the reputation of Holy Mother Teresa look if, just for a moment, we switch off Malcolm Muggeridge's kindly light? In 1994, Hitchens, along with journalist Tariq Ali, wrote the documentary Hell's Angel, which Hitchens presented denouncing Mother Teresa as a fraud who denied a vital medical attention to those in her care and tried to forcibly convert people to Catholicism. For someone whose kingdom is not of this earth, Mother Teresa has an easy way with thrones, dominions and powers. The ensuing fallout led to Hitchens being widely criticized in turn. Number 2. Investigative Reporting – Blind Date if you're going to go undercover on one of the 1990s most popular TV shows, you probably shouldn't use your real name, or else the show's producers might realize that you're actually a journalist. Well, Nicola, I have to say I've got more than a big surprise for you. That's exactly what happened to Cosmopolitan reporter Nicola Gill when she appeared on Blind Date looking for the inside story pretending to be a single secretary. You don't work as a temporary secretary. I know for a fact that you actually, you're an undercover journalist and you've robbed somebody of coming on a proper blind date. Astonishingly, rather than quietly asking Nicola to leave, host and national treasure Scylla Black outed Nicola as a journalist during filming. She's a journalist, ladies and gentlemen, not a blind date at all. She was met with resounding boos from the audience and confusion from her date. And not only was she not a secretary, but she was also engaged to be married. Nicola Gill of Cosmopolitan <laughs> magazine. <laughs> Number 1. Charles Ingram 
Who wants to be a millionaire? A scandal like no other racked the world of British game shows in 2001 when Major Charles Ingram won the top prize on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. You just won one million! <laughs> but Ingram never saw any of that money because ITV realized that his wife, who was in the audience and had previously been a contestant, was coughing when the correct answer was said aloud. It's up to you. I can't help you, Charles. It's your lifeline gone, but. <laughs> <laughs> Delivery of the jackpot was frozen, and ITV handed its evidence over to the police to investigate. I think, I think it was Holbein. <laughs> Two years later, the trial was over, and Chris, his wife Diana, and a fellow audience member, Tetwin Whittock, were found guilty of fraud. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.